Morning guys, what's going on? Day two in Dublin. Did I tell you guys how amazing Dublin is? Well, if I didn't, it's amazing. The city is dope, man. I can't believe that I missed out on the city in uh, 1997. When I came to Europe, I visited England, the Netherlands, Belgium, France, and Germany, and I missed out on coming to Ireland. So this time, guys, I'm so happy that I did it, even though it's 20 odd years later, I'm still happy that I did it now. And also, guys, the good thing about it is that when I came to Europe those many years ago, I did not film any of my experiences. I had pictures of it, but I wasn't into the whole filming thing. So now I may have to visit those places again, but it's okay. I don't mind it. I want to travel. The first thing I want to do is to get some breakfast, and then I want to visit some more landmarks in Dublin. It's a bit warmer today. Yesterday it was, uh, at the same time it was 10 degrees Celsius. Right now it is 12 degrees. I've ditched the, the hoodie, so I've just got a tee and, and my jacket. But I think that for this time of year in Dublin, you gotta bundle up a bit, you gotta dress warmly. So I'm okay, um, I'm used to the weather now, so it's okay. Yesterday was a bit of a, a shock to me. Alright, let's see what O'Brien's has got. Yep, this is the cappuccino that I'm having right now, so I'm just gonna keep take it easy just to stay warm one cup a day. There we go. So it's the um, well, normally it's bacon and sausage with tomato relish. Yeah, but I, of course, asked for bacon and also for some beef sausage. So here we go. We'll speak about it after. That was bassing, man. That breakfast just set me up, guys. Wow, it hit the spot. That was 7 euros for that breakfast. Guys, I just got to tell you that food is ex it's expensive in Dublin. Coffee on its own, by the way, will cost you about 4 euros. So, yeah, it's quite expensive. As well as the food that's expensive, the accommodation is just as expensive, guys. So I'm staying at the Jacobs Inn Hostel. I don't mind staying in hostels, guys, because normally I can find a single room in a hostel. And the accommodation is sometimes just as good as the hotel. Because when you have a single room, you have your own space, you have your own bathroom, everything's private. I really don't mind that. But, I had no choice this time because that was the cheapest accommodation I could find. In fact, um, I'm paying $88 per night. That was the cheapest I could find. Paying $88 a night at a hostel is really expensive. Grafton Street is one of two principal shopping streets in Dublin. The other one being Henry Street. Classic stores, guys. It's very expensive. Like I said, it might be, uh, as you can see, brand names. Yeah. Of course, some of my favorite stores. Chinos. Chinos gelato is quite popular here, guys. Right.
I gotta say it looks like really upmarket stores in Grafton Street. It looks really expensive. That's the St. Stephen's Green Shopping Center. Guys, I'm now entering St. Stephen's Green, which is a park in Dublin. So I believe that the design of Central Park, New York is based on, well obviously on a much larger scale, to, it's based on the design of St. Stephen's Green in Dublin. So uh, yeah, I already get the sense. Having been to Central Park, New York last year, and almost the same time, New York Central Park looks like an exact replica of St. Stephen's Green. Obviously, now it's much bigger and I think they've expanded much more. There's much, uh, there's a lot of other activities as well. That's Robert Emmett. So St. Stephen's Green is a 27-acre park situated in Dublin city centre. Guys, I don't think I'm going to be able to, to cover 27 acres today. So I just wanted to give an idea of what it looks like and maybe just try and capture some of the statues, the most prominent ones. You know, I spent a full day at Central Park in New York. And uh, I, don't, I didn't even scratch the surface. Um, but it was also the final day of me being in New York because I had to catch a flight later that day. So I might have to go back there as well to catch the rest of Central Park. But I mean, there's just no way of, I think you need like three days to capture everything or to at least see most of the things that they have to offer. Guys, just so by the way, um, I haven't read about these things anyway. I'm actually kind of just finding my way, just exploring, and when I see a spot, I just Google it. And that is why I can share some of this information with you. I'm sure it's elsewhere on some other vloggers, uh, YouTube as well. But I'm kind of just trying to find my way and trying to discover things for myself. You know? So I hope you're enjoying this.
that was epic man wow guys that was like a a history class <laughs> if you can call it that I was just checking out the statues and uh, there's some information bits that you can read throughout the park and uh, they've also got the huge pamphlet with the map and gives you like information on every part that you're visiting and every statue obviously and then obviously the history of what went down so the next attraction I want to visit is the Book of Kells and they are on the premises of the Trinity College the library I think That's the Book of Kells. Guys, you have to book your tickets in advance. I didn't do that, obviously. I thought it was free entry. But I will check it out on another day. I'll have to book my ticket online and then have to come back. But this is the Trinity College uh, campus in Dublin. And that's the library where the Book of Kells is situated. Right. Alright guys, and there's it's not a long line but it gets busy and I think it gets busy inside and I don't think that you're allowed to take any pictures on the inside so that's a bummer.